uh, points points to uh, to keep in mind. Yeah. So we look at the AICT funded programs. Purpose of these programs, it is to prepare our resource persons and faculty teaching UHV two. This is number one. Primary objective is to prepare the faculty who are already teaching UHV two in this series of ten. Second uh, part is preparing the coordinators, the regional coordinators, the university coordinators, as well as the potential nodal center coordinators. This uh, group of people, if they have a vision and they are themselves prepared, they can make all the difference. And we have seen this over and over again. In this LDP, uh, Dr. Manu Sharma, who uh, has been through the program before, has been instrumental in taking it forward. In the MDP that happened, uh, Dr. Supraja from SRM was instrumental in taking it forward. So if our RCs, UCs, and potential nodal center coordinators are well prepared, it will make all the difference. The third is develop volunteer teams. So around those who are able to see uh, the relevance and value, regardless of what position they are at, it makes all the difference. So developing our volunteer teams is a very important priority. So that is number three. And then the goal is to proliferate holistic value-based education and universal human values nationwide. And that is an AICT mandate as well. The chairman has spoken about it and it is mentioned in the HVBE document that was released uh, at the Bharatiya Shiksha Samagam uh, in, in July. So all of this is behind uh, why these programs are taking place and why AICT is enabling these to happen. There are many programs in this series. There are FDPs, uh, faculty development programs, management development programs, leadership development programs, volunteer team meetings, regional conferences, national conferences, and maybe international conferences as we go along. And institutions are showing a great deal of interest in hosting them. But we will take help from AICTE to uh, uh, you know, take them forward also. If institutions are not independently able to do that. So in this round, there are these 10 FDPs that are planned. Two of them are specific for the uh, category that I spoke about earlier, this category of faculty teaching UHV2 coordinators. So these two categories are the focus point for these 10 FDPs. And this particular session is in preparation of the resource team. So that's from my side. I'll uh, now request Dr. Kumar Sambhavaya to take it up. So I'll stop sharing from here. Thank you very much. Namaste, Bhaiya. Namaste, everyone. Bhaiya, you may just call me Kumar. <laughs> that is ah, enough. Kumar. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying because <laughs> everybody else is also here. So <laughs> Yeah, I mean, individually, of course, I call you only Kumar. <laughs> okay. We can all see you? the sincere effort of Rajul Bhaiya in documenting everything and making it so well that it becomes presentable. And the whole team is involved in taking the program forward. But Rajul Bhaiya has his own contribution thing that we can easily see. Bhaiya. Should I share the slide from my side here? Huh, please uh, share. Go ahead and share the slides.
So yeah, please let me know if we have to uh, talk about this also, the homework that we had taken last time. Uh, yeah, I should have mentioned this, I forgot. But this homework, there are two pieces to the homework. And this homework is quite important. If we are able to uh, you know, spend some time on it, it would be very useful. Because when we go to explain UHV, and somebody asks us, what is UHV? Like, uh, there was a press conference kind of thing here in the LDP. And this was one of the questions. Or this is a normal question. Anywhere people will ask this question. They'll ask anybody who is connected to UHV, what is this UHV? So how do we articulate it? What is comfortable for us to articulate in a few sentences? So that is the first question. Like that, we have put some... Um, uh, some points for homework and then there are some resources on the next page so uh, those have been mentioned and they have been shared in the group although I think this time we had little time to actually work on them but I know that there are several people who have made a lot of effort in uh, preparing uh, for it I know for example Umeshji has been in the second workshop when he came for it, he said, this is my sixth workshop, I think he said sixth or fifth workshop. And then uh, we asked him, how come it is fifth workshop? And he said that I've read the book five times and uh, gone through the recordings so many times, I think it was three times or something. So, so much of effort uh, people put. So, that all we have tried to document in the homework. So this kind of homework we uh, can do if we are not yet done. So we can, you know, we can do such homework. Many other things can be done, but we have tried to put something um, together for us to focus on these ten uh, FTPs. Dikumar. Yeah, please. yeah. In fact, we have two hours of time now, so maybe. Uh... If time permits, we can take one or two responses regarding regarding each of these questions. Yes, yes, and that will we be. We all nice. are busy. We all know that we all are busy. We are teaching in some institution. We are also taking care of the morning session. Then, uh, working on projects, and there are so many regular activities. So, if we do not get time, well and good. But uh, maybe in the time to come, you can take care of these points. And if you can have. Of one or two responses regarding each of these questions, that would be very good. The second thing I have found is that most of the time we fail to empathize with the other. For example, when I am conducting a workshop, I am focusing on how I can present it better, how I can take the content forward better, but maybe I miss out uh, feeling with the other. The other person has come to a workshop, sent forcibly to the workshop, maybe he or she is not interested to come to the workshop, not made to sit on the floor to which he or she is not accustomed. And then we are placing the content to which one is not able to relate directly. And then I am trying to expect some outcome out of that workshop. And I might fail to be with the other in that situation, feel for the other. And then the relationship part may get disobeyed. May, go, may get missed out in the workshop. So there are so many things as you go on uh, participating, go on exploring, go on taking the content forward to the participants. There are so many things that come across and uh, you are now have a you are now able to have a better vision of this whole program. As we go along and I'll present some content in the slides to come also that will become more clear. But if we can have one or two responses regarding each of these points, then that would be very good. In some limited time, maybe in the next 15 minutes, we can do this and I can present from my side. Ji, Rabin Ji. And let me ask one question here. Uh, how many of us have gone through the UHV2 textbook? Any uh, edition, maybe first or second or third, but have you ever gone through that textbook? You can respond in the chat box. Or if you have a choice to open up a poll, then we can launch a poll also here. G, Ravind Kumar Ji.
Nice, yeah. Yeah, Umesh Bhaiya has gone through the book many times. You all know. <laughs> Very nice. Ravin ji. Uh, okay, Vanchana Didi. Vanchana Didi had raised hand. So what is UHB for you? Maybe in one or three sentences. These are certain questions, no? If you go to some corporate training also, then these very precise, concise questions are asked, uh, which help us to relate better to the whole program. So what is UHB for you? Can somebody respond to this? The Vanshanadi is saying that she has gone through the book. So can anybody volunteer to respond to this point? What is UHV for you? Okay, Supajadidi has responded. Maybe Didi, you can uh, unmute yourself and speak. Okay, Amresh ji. Amresh ji. You can unmute and speak. Okay, uh, maybe the permission is not there to unmute. Only host can unmute. But the mic is there with you and the hand is raised. Uh, no, no uh, that can be done. That yeah, yeah, yeah. must have been because the default setting is not unmuted. So. Yeah, Namaste to everyone. Yeah. Thank you for living. Because now I'm reflecting in my living. No, your voice is not clearly audible. <laughs> okay. One second, Bhaiya. I'm just on. Hope now I'm audible, Bhaiya. Yeah, now you're audible. Yes. Yeah, yeah I was telling that uh, now UHV is uh, for my understanding and how to lead the life. Uh, it is uh, not uh, more than uh, anything else because uh, part of living was there without understanding. Now, whatever I'm doing, I know uh, that uh, the reality with which uh, the self and the body are to coexisting and and the rest of the units in the in the nature are there and how i can fulfill by living with understanding that's what is happening there thank you nice nice i can take one more response then we can go to the next question in the meantime i would suggest that uh, if available then you can take a notebook and a pen and try to write responses to all these points in your notebook maybe we have different perception towards uhb for some of us maybe it could be a course to be taught for some of us uh, it could be an added quality in my life for some of us it could be the sole program to lead a happy life so we have to see where do we stand so for each one of us and this is something to introspect to investigate into one's own imagination and living uh, where does this UHV stand for you? someone has to hello hello Ravinji? Sir. Sir. Okay, sir. Uh, sir. Just a very important question was asked uh, as a helders. I have been given responsibility as a helders in this uh, workshop of uh, this uh, AICT program. And many questions are coming. And out of that, uh, the day before yesterday, at uh, about nine, 8 to 9 p.m., one more participant was asking the Mere is no, no, not post, about but... that, Bhaiya. I'm just Haan, asking sir. this particular question. What is UHV for you? You have to respond for yourself. Yes, sir. This is related to what is UHV for you. So, I connect to you. So, you ask me to 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 ask Himane, it is not a course to get the certificate or to go do some something like to explore the no human being as Mereko kya samaj dari hai mere bare mein wo ek ye journey hai of this USB. So that was I was relating to the questions also. So this is my exploration that uh, whatever no, like mere jitna jitna samaj mere mein aayega to itna itna mere ko matlab dusra ko dikhai padega to wo mera jimedari mere 
तो यूएसबी कंटेंट्स का साथ जुड़ने का वो यही मकसद है तो मेरे को समझना मेरे बारे में समझना मैं क्या कर रहा हूँ मैं जो सोच रहा हूँ नाइस भैया नाइस नाइस भैया What is the key expectation from UHC to FDP? Maybe in one sentence, just one sentence. What is the key expectation? Either you can uh, unmute and speak, or you can write in the chat box. So when you are attending a workshop, UHC to FDP, what is your key expectation? And we are conducting a workshop for the participants. What is the key expectation? We are to initiate the process of self exploration in ourselves. That is the basic key expectation from UHV, Bhaiya. Yeah. Nice, Bhaiya. Very nice answer. So you can all see that in which we essentially we are entering into a process of self-exploration where some proposal has been put forward and I become aware of my natural acceptance and start validating in my living also. So now what are the 10 top or key concepts Communicated in UHV2. This I'll come to. I'll present myself and then we can share our views on that. Short real life incidents that exemplify these key concepts. So maybe you can write from your side in your notebook some real life incidents where you are able to relate. So maybe uh, like when we are sharing the content, we are taking examples which have been shared by resource persons. That is good also because they have been tested over time. And it also may be the case that you are able to get some examples from your living. So maybe you can write that for yourself. Top five shifts you expect to see in the individuals after UHB 2. Would somebody like to respond to this? What are the five shifts that you would like to see in the participants? Maybe one or two shifts. We can start from sharing one or two shifts and then we can lift them. What are the basic shifts which are expected? Yeah. Bhaiya, yeah. uh, one thing which I can see is uh, uh, we can see a commitment for uh, self-development after okay. this uh, UHU2. Nice, Bhaiya. Any other? Yeah, I could. Yeah, Bhaiya, I could see uh, I'm not just a body. So that okay. is the major shift. Okay, nice. Jyoti ji is saying observation of thoughts. Someone else? Dipesh ji is saying more awareness. More awareness. Yeah. Bhaiya, it is understanding the relationship because human being, I want to live in relationship. So if I am able to understand the relationship correctly, then, then it could be helpful for my living. Okay. You will see that the top five shifts that you expect from the workshop, you will be somewhat focused around that. While sharing examples, while illustrating, while elaborating, we'll focus something around that. Those are the shifts which are there in your mind when you are expressing, when you are sharing the content. And you will be expecting that kind of outcome from the participants. If they, if that is not quite visible, then you may feel somewhat disturbed within. If that is visible, then you may feel more enthused to go ahead. So that also is something which you can make out. What do you exactly expect from the participants who are attending the workshop? And also try to see whether these shifts have taken place in you and then up to what extent they have taken. It may be the case that when I was attending the workshop, okay, a very small kind of shift took place in me. But when I'm conducting the workshop, I'm assuming that now after attending this workshop, all these people should be having the right understanding. Okay, When I was attending the workshop, I was asking so many questions and I was... Uh, expecting that the resource person should be listening to each and every question of mine and responding to my questions. But when I am conducting the workshop, I am feeling somewhat perturbed if somebody is asking question again and again. So try to look into those aspects also. You know, and whether these kinds of shifts are seen all the time. Then how we will inspire the host institute and participants of other institute to take up UHV2 as a credit course. You can also mention some top three strategies. Maybe you can share some strategy here as a strategy. How will you plan so that the host institute is able to uh, introduce this as a credit course in the second year? What could be the strategy? And respond either in the chat box. Okay, Jagdish Babuji is saying prosperity to the previous question.
nice ravinji is saying i am part of the distance and my participation is there okay niyati ji is saying the participant is ready to understand others intention okay aprajita ji is saying less fear for future nice ishta ji is saying clarity of thoughts these are very pertinent questions maybe we can add up some more questions here or uh, this question i can leave to you because it may take some time to think over it and whom will you plan to meet listen first when you speak to them what content questions key statements will you make so toward the last question i will say that uh, keep on pondering over it maybe when time permits we can take it up now for the preparation some material is al already available <clears throat> so the recording is there for how to share values it is there on the playlist i hope all of us are aware with the website uhb.org.in and we can see that there are playlists if you have not visited the website please do visit there is a lot of material now available there in audio video as well as uh, text form and that would be quite useful to you then bilingual material is also available uh, you can also see the recording of rp preparation sessions which was conducted on the last weekend then you can go through the textbook and teachers manual if there is anybody here who has not yet gone through the textbook then please go through it that would be really helpful for you a lot of effort has been taken in fact this textbook came up as an outcome of the effort that was made for the uh, previous 15 years before going into putting it in the form of book and the way the whole workshop became more and more fruitful and effective that approach that part of the content was taken up if you could be a part of that you could see that initially we used to present so much of content in a single workshop and then gradually we saw that people are not able to grasp the whole thing so we started uh, somewhat reducing the content also for example when we presented earlier we used to mention that there are six levels of living self body family society nature and existence and then we found that many people are not able to relate to this six levels because it appeared to be too vast and then we reduced it to four levels so those kinds of uh, experiments have been conducted and based on all those experimentation and the outcome that came out we could put it in the form of a book and a manual then you achieve for hpb uh, sorry hvb human value based education holistic value based education so that material is also there then you then the content for uhv cell nodal center and other documents is also placed there and then the faqs are also placed there so you can go through all these links and you can read and listen the recordings so this is the agenda for the session today kumar uh, has to interrupt kumar yeah, we if we go back to the previous slide this top 10 faq by session Uh, we have to obtain them from the UHV two FAQ teams, so we yeah. don't have them uh, apps. I mean, uh, placed as the top ten questions by session so far. So we have to get them uh, from this team. Yeah. We may be yeah. having our own set, but we don't have a comprehensive set yet. Okay, yeah, we have one recording of. Uh, responses to the FAQs by Ganesh ji, you know, which are in the playlist. Ah, uh, those are FAQs which are, uh, you can say, we thought that they are the FAQs, but the real FAQs that come in real sessions, they have been recorded or they have been uh, very well documented by the FAQ team in the online sessions also, and some of them in the. face to face sessions also so but to combine them and see what are the really uh, top 10 or 15 questions for each session for each topic that we need to make and that will help in preparing ourselves for the next round so that is uh, if it is there we can take it we can take it for at least a few of the uh, uh, workshops that have been conducted those are already available so uh, we have to get them from there so these are not yet placed anywhere that i know of yes. 
In response to the previous question that we had, Alok Bhaiya has presented the whole thing point by point. So I'll just mention his response here and then I'll go ahead. So Alok Bhaiya is saying meeting with the director and the deans of the institute during the workshop. Okay. Meeting with previous participants of UHV. Meeting of V cell members. Convey the whole program of AICT regarding UHV in front of all above three meetings. Preparation of a team for SIP UHV module conduction and their training. After workshop, RP team should facilitate for preparation through weekly meeting. Yes, in fact, this strategy could also be chalked out and maybe we can share this strategy in our future meetings because I think when we are going to conduct a workshop, we are taking initiatives from our part, but there is no as such some modus operandi that we need to do this. When we are going to the host institute, are we really meeting the director? We are meeting the uh, members of the well education cell. This might be taking place informally, but this could also be a part of the strategy, which we can chalk out and then share in the future meetings. Yeah, I, I know that Umeshji has made a lot of effort in this direction. Okay, Bhaiya. And Banmuji and Moti, they have made a lot of effort in this direction. So, so we can share it here, Bhaiya, in our future yeah, meetings. We can share it here. But we have to place it in, uh, 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 you know, the process in some way. And so yes. that would be very nice. You know. But this is a very good thing, which uh, uh, um, uh, who has mentioned this, Dilshad Ji, Ashok, Alok Pandey Ji. Yeah. Yeah, this is good. Yeah, nice. 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 Yeah. So... <clears throat> Uh, like in this session, uh, we are going to talk about the vision and then the purpose of UHV 2 FTP, the content, the session plan, the process as a co-explorer, proposing the content, facilitating self-exploration, then questions and answers and how to share values, how to take questions, expected conduct of RP team, role and responsibility of the RP team. So maybe not all, but we'll be taking some parts of the agenda today. So the purpose of UHV2, if we see, it is to relate to the participant. One thing very important. Am I able to relate to the participant? Am I able to see that they are my relatives? It's not that uh, I have gone there as a highly placed resource person and they are there to receive something from me. I'm going to shower some knowledge on them. It's not mm -hmm. that. They are my relatives and I'm going to participate in their happiness and prosperity. This kind of innate feeling has to be ensured. Then to facilitate self-exploration about the existential reality and the role of human being in it. So as we said that this whole workshop is a process of self-exploration. And the more I am into my own self-exploration, my whole demeanor, my whole expression, my whole approach towards the participants gradually gets transformed. When I am living in relationship with my family, with my uh, peer group in the organization with my subordinates, the way I'm trying to take every relationship seriously, trying to ensure mutual happiness in every relationship, that sincerity starts expressing in my own expression in the workshop. The more I'm sincere towards right understanding, the more I'm sincere towards ensuring right feeling, that gradually reflects. I may not be very fluent in speech, but that seriousness of thought, that seriousness of feeling, that sincerity of living accordingly reflects very naturally. In very short moments when we react or respond to a particular situation, that becomes quite visible to the participants. Even if you react for a moment, you know, the participants do take note of that reaction and they may try to uh, either bring forward to you or they may share among themselves that, see, this person himself is getting angry. This person is getting irritated by the questions put forward by this particular participant. So our living reflects really in the face-to-face -face mode workshops. So the more I'm into this exploration, the more I am uh, able to see that this is not only some content to be shared and discussed, and it is something to be lived accordingly. That will gradually reflect in your living, in your workshop also. And for the development of a holistic human world vision, so there, when we take the content forward, we are also able to develop the vision. 
vision for a happy and prosperous life vision for a happy and prosperous society happy and prosperous world generation by generation then to help the participants see the potential of inculcating human values in their own life family in education now mostly our participants are the teachers isn't it when we are conducting faculty development program so the uhv2 content can be shared with anybody even the family members but now that we are taking uh, it to the faculty as a faculty development program and they are going to teach this course in the second year so uh, they have to develop that kind of competence so that they are able to place the importance of this content in the students of technical education who are above 16 or 17 years of age and uh, the effectiveness has to be ensured it may be the case that the course is running in so many institutions but we are not able to see the students coming forward uh, with the program to become a resource person or take this content forward to the society in some way or the other so that kind of outcome can be expected and that is only possible when the participant is able to see the potential of understanding and living accordingly to augment their preparation for fulfilling their role as a uhv2 faculty as a coordinator of a potential nodal center of a university or college and as an administrator in the institution so on one hand we are a human being so i have to understand this and live accordingly so that my life is fulfilling my relationships are fulfilling my health is good isn't it i feel prosperous within i feel happy uh, within and the happiness becomes something innate to me i don't have to borrow from outside at the same time we are a faculty and we have a role to play we are into a profession so i have to teach a course effectively i have to take attendance i have to monitor uh, the conduct of the students in the class i have to evaluate their performance i have to give marks if the some if the students are not performing well i can also let them fail in the course for once and then ask them to appear again for the course so the preparation also has to be looked into isn't it as a uh, uhv2 faculty now the same faculty with gradual progression becomes a coordinator either of a nodal center or a value well education cell <clears throat> or a university or a college even of a region isn't it gradually of a nation so that kind of potential is there and this is a part of the process some of us also might be there in the institution in some administrative roles in fact many of the participants are now either deans or directors or hods so uh, on one hand you are helping the institution run this course on the other hand you are developing a model of holistic living you are developing a model of living with values and then managing the institution in the present day society many times people feel that these all things are good they have been said throughout the ages but today in real life world it cannot be lived because these are somewhat uh, theoretical inputs these are somewhat you know well said rather than done so when i am getting some role in the institution it becomes an opportunity for me how i can manage the department how i can manage the institution how i can manage the students with this understanding okay can i bring transformation in their life with this understanding then you will see that people are able to see that this is also another way of managing an institution managing a department managing the role of a dean without getting irritated frustrated without complaining about anything living peacefully and then uh, fulfilling your role and obligations and then to motivate the institution to implement uhv so so many things can be listed here okay basically uhv2 is just one step in our program for right understanding then the session plan is presented here all of us are acquainted with that i will not go into that then the program yeah what is taken uh, last time or do i have to go over this again uh kubal can you go back to the previous slide this one uh, in this one this one that is marked in red is something new for these uh, fdps okay so uh, role of faculty is highlighted in most of the uh, this uh, Uh, workshop, but then the role of the coordinators 
is to be uh, highlighted also somewhere. So this one session is there for that. So maybe we have to present the PPT for this. Anabhya? Uh, that is a separate session. This particular session is for preparing the resource person and the resource person, I mean the co-coordinator and uh, yeah. you know that. And the people who are preparing themselves to become uh, uh, this one. Yeah. So if you go back to the previous slide, yeah. This one? Oh, okay. So for uh, these FTPs, we will have assignments or tutorials or practice sessions that are mentioned in this with this aim that we will aim the assignment, etc. to reinforce the core concepts. So if they do the assignment, they should be able to get more clarity about the core concept. So if we are talking about trust, they should be able to get more clarity about the meaning of trust. Second thing is relate the core concept to life. So if we are talking about trust, they should be able to see that this is relevant to my life. And the third thing is uh, how this core concept is related to my role in the institution. If I am a UHP faculty, yeah, this uh, has been mentioned, but if I am a co coordinator of some uh, university or some potential nodal center, then how is it related to my role? So these three things are the purpose of these assignments. So when we do, do the assignment, we must uh, spend some time on the next day to review the assignments properly and give our uh, expectation from the assignment that we did some assignment then what is to be expected so for example if we do list of desires uh, assignment on uh, day one or day two uh, this is five days so whenever we do that let's say then one key takeaway from that should be that for fulfilling any of my uh, my uh, uh, aspirations I need right understanding. I cannot do without right understanding. For addressing any of my concerns, right understanding is required. It is essential. So right understanding has to be something that is, becomes my first priority. So that kind of conclusion, if it is coming out from the assignment, then it is reinforcing the core concept proposal that was given that right understanding is our first priority as a human being. And then second priority is relationship and so on. So such things must be reinforced in the assignments or the tutorials or practice sessions. Then uh, the second point is the role of this, what Kumar just mentioned. Those are, of course, uh, important things which are not a part of this particular presentation but uh, those uh, have to be there. So uh, this is just reiterating what was there on the previous slide, the bottom part. But the first part is very important, I think, the assignments, the review of those assignments on the next day. And I know some of us have been doing that very diligently and asking what are the shifts. So for example, Kumar asked this question that you must have seen some shift in your uh, idea about prosperity. So those kind of shifts are very uh, pertinent to ask when they do some assignment about, uh, you know, these uh, on each each day. Yeah, so that's, uh, you can go ahead, Kumar, next slide. Nice, nice. Yeah. Let me just yeah. mention, since it has come up, that at a personal level, I still make a list of my aspirations and concerns. <laughs> so I do list my aspirations and my concerns and then try to explore at a personal level. And today for Sunday, I have made a program that I have to count my clothes again and then update my Excel sheet. <laughs> so we have to keep on doing these assignments because these are very much required for our personal development. So these assignments are also meant for us, not only the participants and we have to keep on doing them. And that will help us explore further transform further ji
now uh, today we are going to place some content here for the rp or the co-facilitator so this is something that we mentioned now one thing i would like to mention at the very outset is that we have to understand what proposal means and what proposal consists of so we all can see that the proposal is something that i do not take for granted i am sharing with the other with my acceptance that the other may or may not agree to it so i am ready to accept the other even though the other is not accepting my proposal is that true am i able to see this within me that i am ready to accept the other even if the other is not accepting my proposal when i look at the participant do i expect that i will accept the participant only if the other accepts my proposal or my acceptance for the participant is unconditional then only i can place the content as a proposal you can respond in the chat box or if somebody would like to raise hand and say something here then most welcome so will be i had given some response to the previous question like the expectation from this course so helpful for strengthening student mentoring system and help ensure self confidence in the students and see the education not just for having physical facilities yeah ishra ji is saying unconditional but try to look into it or you can jot it down you can uh, look into it further that does it happen that if somebody does not accept my proposal within me i start rejecting the other does it happen while i am conducting a workshop do i feel that this person is here only to disturb me uh, or only ask such questions with which i am uncomfortable try to look into it so if that kind of perception is there then in some sense or the other it is not a proposal it is some kind of dictum that i am trying to share with the other so we have to be aware of that so the proposal is something which is open for one to explore to either accept or reject but basically to verify this is one thing second thing a proposal has three parts the elemental the thoughtful and the practical part i have chosen these words uh today morning only maybe you can select some better words in hindi it is tatvik baudhik and vyavaharik so the basic element the fact the truth that has to be conveyed this is one thing the second thing how i analyze and imagine regarding that proposal this is the thoughtful part the baudhik part and the third is the vyavaharik that is the practical part when it comes into my living so when i am proposing the content we have to present all the three parts and does not have to be lopsided so while presenting the content we have to share all the parts of the proposal the elemental content is the definition and the precision in the proposal which can be verified simply by referring to the natural acceptance for example trust is assurance of intention very simple one liner statement which reflects the reality so it is a simple reflection of the reality said in very few words that is the basic content that i have to share with the other isn't it so when i am presenting the content this does have to have to come up you know maybe i start elaborating on something but the basic issue is not proposed that's why we are having slides because the slide has that elemental content written over it so that the other is always able to look into this elemental content it is always there in front of the eyes of the participant it may sometimes happen you know, that when we talk with somebody the basic content may get lost when we are giving examples in general also while we are conversing with somebody the basic issue may got a miss we are elaborating on it we are sharing examples we are reflecting but what is the basic issue what do i want to say that may not be conveyed to the other so this has to be maintained throughout that the element the basic element is there as a core of the whole workshop that core content is very much there so this is the elemental part the thoughtful content is the explanation that has to be elaborated upon to describe the meaning of the words so that one can analyze what is being said and imagine one's own life with that meaning for example difference between intention and desire so when you say trust is assurance of intention so one may not understand what intention is so we try to elaborate on the intention part now saying intention is natural acceptance it is just giving a synonym for the intention saying it is your innateness is another synonym 
so how does one come to know the meaning of intention for that we elaborate we create a group of words that is explanation and then we try to elaborate on it we try to explain it try to refer it to certain things so that one is able to grasp the meaning of intention this is what is intention and this is not the intention this is the intention this is not the intention like this so we try to differentiate between intention and desire we try to distinguish between intention and competence natural acceptance and acceptance competence and skill this comma has got wrongly placed here basically this grammarly places comma so many times so competence and skill are two different things you know even if somebody is having a skill one may not have the competence but assuming a skill to be competent we start reacting that this person is so uh, literate so well educated still why this person is not having this understanding and we assume that is skill to be competent and start reacting or accept, ex expecting too much from the other so this thoughtful part has to be uh, shared so what we do we present the elemental content first by defining it defining the term and then we elaborate by ourselves everything is not written in the slides in fact if you look at the content that was shared earlier when you were writing on the board we just used to write the elemental content and then the thoughtful was presented merely from our side but that needed some more preparation so to facilitate the explore, uh, resource person we have somewhat written some more content in the slides so that the other is able to get the ideas what one has to share those uh, cues are available to the uh, resource person so that one can have so many things to share in the given time and not just one has to just go for some word or some uh, content from within so the thoughtful content also has been now added in the slides to help the resource person now this practical content is something that you have to share from yourself it is not there in the slide so the definition is there the thoughtful content to some extent is there and this practical content is the application in our day to day living which helps the participant to reflect on one's own behavior work and participation so here we need to take examples cite case studies help the participant ask questions from one's own personal life etc for example examples of doubting the intention we take some examples of how we doubt the intention how we confuse between intention and competence how we confuse between word and meaning like in the case of trust we cite one example when a professor got heart attack because his wife used some strong words and he was not able to distinguish between the word and the meaning assigned to the words and behind that meaning there was doubt and intention so through these examples we try to help the participant reflect on one's giving the other person is a professor so we bring the example of a professor if you are presenting the content to students of btech then we'll bring examples which are which the students are able to relate to their life if i am presenting the same content to a class 5 student i will try to bring example of relation between mother and child or siblings so we try to illustrate this way and uh, this part does help in one's exploration but the essential thing or the uh, very important thing is that we need to ensure that all the three parts are covered while presenting the content without being lopsided on one part maybe just giving examples may make the session very enjoyable but leaving doubts on the elemental part so it may become enjoyable people are laughing people are enjoying you know people are uh, able to uh, very easily you know be a part of the session but maybe missing the basic point because they are just enjoying the examples being shared and they are trying to harp upon the lack of right understanding they are enjoying how we are lacking right understanding and making mistakes in our life but they are missing basic point the intention part may not be clear just sharing the elemental part may make the rp just using the same word again and again or giving just synonyms for example if i have to explain the intention i can say natural acceptance again and again so the session may become boring after some time or one may start reacting that you have got only one thing to say natural acceptance you are saying that again and again and so this kind of reaction may come up if you are placing the elemental part again and again or just saying that oh this is a proposal this is a proposal you know or this is a proposal or you know we'll keep it open we'll keep it open every time so this kind of scenario may appear and just giving the thoughtful part may make make the session too analytical you are trying to analyze various parts of the proposal and then placing them uh, in some order 
but the, that has become too analytical, particularly when family members are attending. So you see that uh, there are groups of people who are more oriented to either the elemental. So if somebody has read spiritual textbooks or some darshan, she is more focused, he or she is more focused on the elemental part. What is happiness and what is bliss? How to distinguish between happiness and bliss? Do you want happiness or attachment? Uh, sorry, de detachment. So these kinds of questions will come up when people are from that background. If there is a faculty or professor teaching some critical course, the entire part will be you know, uh, visible. And when we have children, spouses sitting in the work, the family workshop, then we'll see that the practical component is more expected. So looking at the audience or the participant, you have to decide you know, what part has to be covered to what extent. But at the same time, all the three components have to be This is something which is very important. Any reflection on this? Am I able to make sense? Any reflection on this? So this is something that we have found that resource persons uh, could be there like some people are more oriented towards the elemental part, some are more oriented towards the thoughtful part and some are more oriented towards the practical part. So each of these will have different outcomes. Okay, But the workshop is balanced and the outcome of the workshop, it is more fruitful for the three are care of a balanced manner. If this is fine, then I can go ahead. Any question regarding this? Ji, need it be? Ji, namaste, bhaiya. Ek workshop mein ek participant ne jab pehla hi session chal raha tha right understanding wala tab se wo matlab ham फिजिकल फैसिलिटी फिर रिलेशनशिप और फिर सही समझ ऐसे फ्लो में आते हैं तब वो तब से ही कह रहे थे कि ये पूरा कंटेंट रैशनली नहीं है तो मुझे ऐसा ध्यान में आ रहा था कि स्वीकृति अभी तो तुरंत नहीं बनेगा पर उसके बाद वो एक हाथ दो ही सेशन में आए और फिर वापस आए ही नहीं वर्कशॉप में तो उस समय आ, मैंने ये बात कही थी कि हम आगे जाकर इसको और एलाबोरेट भी करेंगे फिजिकल फैसिलिटी जितनी जरूरी है उधर भी ध्यान दिलाया था पर रैशनल वर्ड को मैं ठीक से प्लेस नहीं कर पाई थी तो उसे कैसे और बताना ठीक रहेगा जी सो लेट मी रिस्पॉन्ड इन इंग्लिश दीदी बिकॉज सम पार्टिसिपेंट्स नॉट बी एबल टू फॉलो एंड यू हैव वेल वर्स इन इंग्लिश आई नो सो सो इफ समबडी इज सेइंग दैट द कंटेंट इज नॉट रैशनल देन आई एम अ पार्टिसिपेंट सो व्हाट डू यू मीन बाय बीइंग रैशनल सो दैट आवर we are able to see the expectation of the other so in the very beginning we are saying that you do not have to assume anything to be true or false you know we have to question we have to verify so if the other is not getting this kind of opportunity to reason out then we have to look into the whole sharing whether my sharing is allowing the other person to reason out or not if the other person is too much biased towards some borrowed notion then that also can be visible to us and we can look from that perspective also. So we have to make out ourselves in that session what is actually happening. Why is this person come, uh, coming like that? And also in during the break time, we can talk with the other. This is also very important. During the break now, when we are taking tea or lunch, so we can address such participants who are not feeling satisfied with the content. So that also gives some insight into their current state. Why is that person reacting in this manner? For example, if somebody has been forced to sit in the workshop, this person is somewhat reacting and the reaction may not exactly reflect uh, uh, from where he's coming. That is some irritation that he's trying to present through the reaction. So this is also possible. And that's how we have a whole team of co-facilitators and observers 
and it is also a part of the uh, responsibility in our workshop that we try to relate to every participant during the break try to get in touch with them maybe have tea with them or have lunch with them sitting together so that also helps improve the quality of the workshop ji ji bhaiya thank you so much live with the now let me go forward now what are the key takeaways of uhp 2 fdp so what is the basic content of i will get kumar wo pichli slide the previous slide is over is it you want previous to say something slide. here bhaiya yeah acha you have already covered all of them okay okay yeah i covered it okay i was paying attention to the top line only okay the rest is only illustration or explanation of that ji yes yes i can see that now okay and i'll say that at a personal level we also have to see whether all these three parts of every part of the workshop or every uh, content of the workshop is clear to us or not or maybe you can write also when i am talking about prosperity what is the elemental part what is the thoughtful part and what is the practical part how will it come into my living when i am talking about sanyam so just giving some program of sanyam is not enough that becomes the practical part that you take food accordingly and you go for exercises and you do yoga and pranayam and you know these things that is the practical part the elemental part is that am i able to see the body as an instrument then only i become responsible to the body yeah, so this, this is something uh, that... hmm? yep yeah. ji bhaiya uh, in in this uh, it is very important to have this balance and what you mentioned about connecting to the participants you know ensuring that they are comfortable and not a whole lot of formality kind of thing so like that um that is very important to start with so that there's an environment where uh, people can listen to everything in a you know a natural way so that is uh, of course very important what i've seen is that in these workshops uh, people uh, some people if they are trying to convince the other then people take it away as some kind of uh, 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 viewpoint of some you know particular uh, uh, organization or some particular sect or something like that you know so they are not able to see it as a universal kind of content so that is one thing that i have noticed and another I'll thing i'll come I've to that yeah i'll come to that in the next slide no we are going to list it okay. in fact you have already listed it yeah acha acha okay 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 i'll come to that bhaiya all right okay okay nice uh, there is one question from priya didi that can we uh, mention the three components of the content about prosperity ji so if you look at the elemental part prosperity is the feeling of having or producing more than required physical facilities it is a feeling one thing of having or producing more than required so the feeling part has to be understood that it is a feeling and not some possession of wealth the physical facility is not prosperity it is my feeling ji sunil bhai i'll respond to your question also. so uh, one thing it is a feeling and then there are two parts of uh, the feeling of prosperity one is the right assessment of the need for physical facility and then having a position we are not able to hear your voice kumar ji my connection got off for some time am i visible and audible the slide is visible and
Am I audible? It is visible and you are audible. Then. Okay. Please go ahead. Yeah. Now, so the thoughtful part would be elaborating upon it. That how do I assess the need for physical facility? How do I uh, make out whether I am able to have enough or not? So this would be the thoughtful part. And then the Vyohari the practical part would be taking examples. So maybe we say example of a bottomless glass. So by that example, we able to relate to some reality. That okay, if the glass is not having a bottom, how will it ever get filled up? So if I'm not able to make out the need for physical facility rightly, how will it ever feel fulfilled? And then we also cite examples of people uh, or not exactly naming them, but giving example that somebody is having 1,000 houses, but is still not feeling prosperous. What is the problem? If somebody is having so many pairs of clothes, but is still not feeling prosperous, so many pairs of shoes, but not feeling prosperous. So the examples also we relate. Like, and also I, do, I feel sharing with the other. So that would be the practical part. I hope Priya Didi, this is clear. Sunil Bhaiya, your question is there. Yeah, Ji Bhaiya, Namaste. I place a question in the chat box also. One question is regarding, um, you said regarding the practical part of this, the third thing. So there, when we place examples, we used to place this bookish examples, which are available in the USU2 textbook. Um, it's also good or desirable to have uh, examples from our own practical life, life, our own practical experiences, which are connected to the content. For example, in our um, interaction with the students or the colleagues or other relatives, what we experience in a relationship and what we experience um, with regard to the, the, the happiness and prosperity, is it also desirable to place them how do, do we deal with the students' problems, all these things? Yes, certainly, Bhaiya. Yeah. Uh, just with one word of caution that if you try to imply that I am having lack of right understanding by giving my own example, then maybe the uh, participants are able to relate to that content, but at the same time, they start under-evaluating you. So we have to take care of that. I, at the moment, we are not having the right understanding in completeness. So we are committing mistakes in our life. We are having lack of right feeling. Maybe sometimes we feel deprived. But if we start taking such examples to a new participant who has just come to understand the content, and that example proves that I still do not have the feeling of prosperity within, then what is going to be the takeaway for the participant? So we can take examples from our life, but in some way, it has to reflect on the meaning rather than allowing the participant to uh, under evaluate me. This is something which I think personally, but maybe we can keep it open and we can take different approaches. But this is something that I found that if I start sharing some example from my life, it shows that I'm not having the right understanding. Then what is the takeaway for the participant? Then he will say that you have been conducting workshop for such a long time, you have been reading the books and sharing with so many people, but still you are not having the right understanding. So what good has it made to you? This kind of perception may come up. So we have to be aware of that. With that awareness, you can share examples from our life or examples from situations around. And second thing I'll say that the examples are there from the book, but I'll not call them as bookish examples because they are examples which have been taken from sharing by the others. So they are not exactly bookish examples, though they are examples mentioned in the book. Maybe the example that we take today will also become a part of the book tomorrow. But they are not exactly bookish, though they are placed in the book. <laughs> Gee. Yeah, yeah I, I understand that. The meaning of bookish and the meaning of the examples which are available in the book. The sharing is only that I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, whatever we are sharing is from our own uh, self exploration part. So, however, I have progressed in my self exploration. I am placing it before the co explorers. Like that, can I uh, place it? Yes. I mean, the, yes, yeah. yes. The earlier I was in this state mm -hmm. by giving. Uh, uh, a thoughtful or by exploring this part of the content, I am not able to, now able to see this. Many people do share that earlier I had so many clothes. I have not purchased clothes for the past five years. This is very good to listen to. Mm -hmm. People do get uh, like people are able to see the transformation in your life when you share such examples. 
I used to react a lot to my child, but now I am not reacting. I earlier used to get fed up with my wife. I am not getting fed up now. This part is okay. But if I say that yesterday I reacted again to my wife, then this is not going to give a very good impression of the whole content or the uh, resource person. Though it is also example from my life, but if I'm sharing the la lack of understanding in me, then it is not going to add value to the workshop. Yeah, I got it. I'm working for right understanding and I'm sharing this with you. That I am improving myself. I, another, another question which I have is uh, sometimes, as Nididi pointed out, some participant starts uh, to convince their own views uh, to to the resource person that whatever you are telling is not rational, whatever you are telling is not right, and whatever we I, I have uh, uh, studied in my previous education is right. So um, to those participants who are trying to convince the resource person, what shall be our approach? And you have responded to that, but I am giving an example. For example, suppose if somebody is telling that the as uh, the existence of self, it is not there. We are also uh, trying to keep this open um, because the re we can realize that the reality is there, but still it is not that easy for a new participant to uh, come to this reality, this understanding. So we keep it open on the basis of this need, activities, and responses. But if somebody is uh, uh, totally rejecting that, how do we uh, respond to that? Okay, Bhaiya. So, like your question may have multiple connotations. This is one connotation that you put forward, that somebody is saying that the self is not there. Now, here, uh, we can handle it at, or we can respond to the question uh, at an elemental level, as well as the thoughtful level and the practical level. So, at the elemental level, we can ask that on what basis we are saying this. You know? Have we been able to observe this? or it is just a thought of mind. This is one thing. At a thoughtful or a rational level, we can see that let us assume that the self is not there. Okay. So all the effort that you are making in your life, what is the takeaway from this? Now, this is the way I respond, but there could be better responses also. So like as we do in mathematics, no? assume that the contrary is true. Okay. You know, when you assume the contrary to be true and then you try to reason it out, the outcome is contradicting the previous assumption. So this kind of rational approach can also be taken to some extent. The other person is just coming logically or rationally. You know? So this can also be done. So uh, I'll just share one example which is a little humorous. In fact, one student in my class when I was teaching in my institute was trying to say that the self is not there. So, like, this can be shared with the student but not with the participants in the workshop because I had become somewhat uh, friendly with the students. So I shared that let us assume that the self is not there. Okay. Now the death is there. After some time, the body goes back to the soil and the self is not there. So now ultimately you have turned into soil. Now the plant crops up in the soil. Okay. There's a plant that. So you are now a plant. And then the plant is eaten by the cow. Okay. Right. And then the cow gives dung. So just observe what is happening to you with all this education. You are turning into <laughs> this kind of thing. So in the class, I found with the students, this kind of approach becomes somewhat very much clear uh, or gives too much of clarity to the student. That yes, if I'm not the self, I'm only the body, then what I am going to be with this assumption? So this could be another approach of assuming the contrary and then responding. But certainly I will not describe this or I will not suggest this for faculty, but this is something that I tried with the students and this works well. Assuming the contrary to be true and then giving some humorous illustration and then that clarifies the content. But this could be one rational approach. Now, practically, you know, when we uh, are assuming that the self is not there, then we can ask that who becomes unhappy, you or your body. And there, you will see that has some supposition that the self is the brain. Now, if the other is able to reason out with that point, when the other is saying that the self is the brain, then we can keep it open. Then when you are saying that the self is the brain and nothing else, so on what basis we are saying? Does the medical science say this? Or have you read anywhere this kind of supposition, this kind of assumption that is there in you? If not, then keep it open. 
so one may not say that self is like you are saying that the self is not there so how can you say that the self is not there at the same time uh, we can keep it open and then keep on exploring because there is no ground for saying that the self is not there you are not able to see that the self is there but there is no ground to say that self is not there so keep it open on a rational basis we can reason out like this ji sir thank yeah. you so yeah yeah we don't need to convince the other but we just try to help them and then we uh, if it is not they are not trying to explore then we can just uh, uh, keep it open just like that yeah so that is yeah. like adding parallel assumptions like mm -hmm. somebody is assuming something then you can say that on this basis this can also be assumed this can also be assumed so it is also a rational approach if somebody is trying to reason out that the way you are saying that the self is not there the same way one can say that self is there without observation and there is no ground for saying that the self is not there neither the prevalent science says this nor the you know any kind of spiritual text says this ji ji lalita didi नमस्ते भैया नमस्ते सभी को भैया सुनील भाई दैट इज वेरी मच इम्पोर्टेंट लाइक सेल्फ इज वी कैन नॉट सी सेल्फ बट वी कैन टेक अप द एग्जांपल्स लाइक इन साइड द वाटर साल्ट वाटर और सलाइन वाटर देर वी कैन नॉट सी साल्ट इज देर आर नॉट बट इफ यू विल टेस्ट देन ओनली वी कैन टेल दर इज साल्ट इज देर सो दट कैंड ऑफ सेंसेशंस कैन बी Uh, given even as a general examples uh, no bhaiya no didi certainly not in fact this is something that i will mention the i will uh, or at this point also in the next slide we should not be giving similes okay. somebody tries to explain the cell by hardware and software or salt in water you know so these kinds of similes do not work rather uh, it leads to wrong conclusions like one faculty while presenting the content in one institute at bombay gave this example of hardware and software and then when a student said that sometimes the software becomes corrupt and vanishes so does the same thing happen to the self also it vanishes so that is not there okay it is continuous yeah and so we that means we should universal acceptor mode which we must go no that also yes, can be avoided see the person has just started exploring this is another common mistake uh, uh, we try to and force or the concept or we try to prove by saying that this is something universal no let the universal part be open to the participant let him feel or see that it is universal it's not that i have to say this from my side okay Because how do i say that this is universal have i experimented with every human being no they need to verify themselves as a let open proposal yeah so regarding natural acceptance also no we do say that this is something innate in you try to see this is invariant with time try to see and it is universal you keep it open you try to verify yourself i am not saying this from my side so innateness and invariant with time this two these two things can be verified sitting in the workshop whether it is universal or not let it be open this is another important point nice that it came out through your question okay bhaiya any mathematical uh, way can we go for this one it is not a tried no no see mathematical the, the way i said no that if somebody is trying to work at a rational level then uh -huh. maybe assuming the contrary to be true and then trying to say that you know this will not work this is to only some extent because we are not trying to prove the point we are only trying to help the other see the fallacy in one's own perception i am trying to help the other how one is uh, not perceiving the right way assuming something but not clear that this is only an assumption i am not trying to prove the point but trying to uh, bring out the fallacy in one's own way of looking at things this is this can be done but the proving part can be removed okay bhaiya okay thank you bhaiya nice didi good questions coming up and these are very pertinent questions any other question uh okay thank you bhaiya till now i am having only this nice nice didi any other person uh -huh. the participant here nice so let me go to the next part now we have listed some key takeaways here so what is the sort the participant how much can go to the participant in a single workshop now this 
a uh, person who is sitting in the UHV2 workshop has already done UHV1. So some content has been transferred to the other, right? Now we are trying to take it further and deeper. So the need for value education, is that clear or not? Many times we'll see that it is clear to the participant at the very outset. And there will be some participant who will be feeling that why should this be taught in the classroom? You know, how will it ever help? Can it be taught? In fact, people sitting on the top in the system are having these kinds of questions. Can it be taught? They have a different meaning of teaching altogether, though the word appears to be similar. So they are trying to say that only teaching in a classroom will not help. It has to be practiced. That is fine. But it cannot be taught. If that is the case, then we have to you know, look into that. So are they able to see the need for giving inputs in human values in education? Then are the basic guidelines clear or not? Universal, rational, verifiable, natural, acceptable. Are these guidelines clear or not? And the content, of course, has to be gradually developed so that becomes clear. And the process of education is self-exploration. So we can see at a personal level also that uh, I'm basically into a process of self-exploration. If you try to meditate on it, the content of value education, you try to meditate, you try to see, and you also try to read proposals from other corners. You see that essentially people have been trying to raise this process of self-exploration, isn't it? So this part has to be clear to us. This is also very important that basic aspiration is continuous happiness and prosperity. In fact, in due course of life, we do forget and people have been able to forget or people are forgetting that they basically aspire for happiness in the race to earn a post, earn a job, get better package, get you know, uh, uh, promotion or get better avenues for uh, career. They forget that they basically are aspiring for happiness. So this is something that we can reiterate. In fact, myself, I have been now saying this time and again in my meetings or uh, uh, class also, or in the workshop also, that try to look into this. You have to basically aspire for happiness. Do not aspire basically for physical facility. Physical facility is only a need of the body. You, know, you aspire for happiness. That is what you are looking for. So this basic aspiration has to be clear and this can be conveyed to the participant. And the prosperity being a feeling, that it is a feeling which you aspire for. Do not aspire for wealth, you aspire for feeling of prosperity. You can illustrate with these examples also. So this is the second key takeaway, key takeaway that can be transferred to the participant. Then the right priority of right understanding, relationship and physical facility. This is something that somewhat becomes the underlying you know, content for the whole workshop. Every time you are able to reflect on this. And I'll say that all of us who are co-explorers also have to keep on looking into these things. Am I able to place right understanding at the first priority in my life? How much time and effort I am investing for right understanding? Am I spending at least one hour every day for right understanding? One week at least in a year. In fact, all, all of us who are there in the session today are of course doing that. that. But there are many who have gone through the workshop or they were earlier good volunteers, but that, that somewhat they have got lost in the... Uh, their own life, assuming some responsibility in the family or in their profession. They have not been able to cater to it uh, responsibly. So maybe this priority somewhat takes a back seat and they are not able to place it rightly in their life. But we have to see at a personal level that am I able to place it rightly in my life? Is right understanding the first priority for me? Then I will plan every program for my job, my health, my family, my career, you know, my society around, my extended family with this priority. This is another important takeaway. Then we can see that happiness is to be in harmony at four levels of living. If I'm able to see this very clearly in my own life, I can see that happiness is the same for all. Otherwise, we also might have notions that for me, happiness is this, for my spouse, happiness is something else. For my child, happiness is something else. A very natural outcome of this Point four is that happiness is something common to all. If happiness is to be in harmony. You now for myself, am I able to see this, that happiness is in harmony and not something else? It is not some sensation, favorable sensation. It is not some favorable situation outside or favorable feeling shared by others. You know, it is something innate in me and it is to be in harmony. Next, prosperity, the feeling of having or producing more than required physical facility. Uh, Something that I responded to earlier when Priyadidi had raised a question. 
this is another key takeaway then right understanding is ensured exploration of harmony at four levels and these are the four levels individual that is human being family society and nature and existence so for me as a human being right understanding comes at the first priority and right understanding ensured through self exploration not by getting information from outside in the morning session we can see that there are many questions where people have been able to read so many textbooks or have gone through so many practices and somewhat uh, we do get carried away by those concepts or something that we have read from the book and while exploring we get carried away in our thoughts we are not able to pinpointedly see what is being said this is one common problem in our exploration we get somewhat uh, swayed away or focused around something which is not a part of the proposal isn't it this is another important point so uh, this can be conveyed to the participant also then self and body very important so uh, the basic lack of clarity that self and body two entities are there this becomes a kind of uh, deterrent in the whole process of self exploration assuming one self to be the body the moment we assume ourselves to be the body we assume physical facility to be happiness and then uh, the whole program gets uh, misguided so this is something that we have to see clearly and we also have to mention in fact if you see in all the sessions we are mentioning this every time that human being not really the body when talking about relationship we are saying that the relationship is there between self and self talking about society we are again saying that right understanding in every individual that means you know in the self of the individual when talking about the four orders we are seeing self plus body in animal as well as human order so purposefully the self and body being distinct has been brought forward in every session of the workshop because this is a very important point and then self as imagination which has three sources preconditioning sensation and natural acceptance this is also something that lately we have tried to highlight in every session that how differentiation is a part of preconditioning how assuming intention to be competence is a part of a preconditioning and how struggle for survival is a part of your preconditioning and how we get motivated by sensation and do come and do commit mistakes in our life so these are three important three sources of our imagination which is very important to be brought out then harmony in the self is evolved by referring to natural acceptance awakening the harmony in the self Uh, some mistake is there or making to the higher activity in the self not harmonizing the self that's how it has gone evolve when referring to the natural thing the higher activity in the self so in uhv2 we do not talk much about b1 but we are able to show to the participant that this is where we have to work actually in uhv3 we are focusing on the higher activity of the self but here we are only referring but that process and that uh, feasibility has to be established or has to be conveyed that it is quite possible it's not that right understanding is just an ongoing process it can never get complete no this is something that has been said in the tradition many times also that my right understanding is only a drop in the ocean and the whole existence is so vast that one can never understand we are not saying that we are saying that right understanding can be complete with my own exploration then self is central to human existence the body merely being an instrument and this ensures the feeling of self regulation in the self and health in the body so you know and we also mentioned about prosperity here again that if i am able to see the body and instrument then i have the feeling of self regulation and this naturally ensures health in the body and feeling of prosperity within but this naturally comes from the understanding of the human being as coexistence of self and body then trust is the assurance that the other wants to make me happy intention is pure and this is another very important part all of us are aware of that 
many times when talking about physical facilities people who are involved totally in physical facilities they become somewhat perturbed on the first day or the second day that uh, something that they have considered very important in their life is being you know uh, shared in such a manner you know somewhat it is being under evaluated but when we talk about relationship then they are able to evaluate themselves really in fact when we talk about relationship people from both the backgrounds some people they are from the spiritual background and from the very first session they have taken a position that what these people are seeing only is, is at the superficial level we have to talk about bliss we have to talk about the soul we have to talk about the super consciousness and there will be another kind of people who are into materialistic life and they would be feeling and you know, not so comfortable when you talk about physical facilities and placing them in the as the third priority or there would be people who have been struggling for physical facility throughout their life and they have not been able to acquire they also feel that this is somewhat being under evaluated which is so important but when you talk about relationship and we talk about trust then they are able to relate very well to the content of the workshop and respect is right evaluation and in these three dimensions purpose program and potential we all are the same only the competence can vary and with this i am able to see that the other is similar to each other so respect being the right evaluation now in uhb2 if somebody has done uhb1 very seriously then only one is able to come up to this part you know yeah people do take away examples of over and under evaluation this is something quite visible in their sharing also but if somebody if somebody is able to see exactly what right evaluation means then that is very good to see then affection care guidance reverence glory gratitude and love this more or less comes at the level of thought okay people are able to relate but uh, the elemental part may get missed out many times now we talk about love this gets communicated as the completeness of feeling in relationship so essentially people from either the spiritual extreme a uh, spiritual stream or the materialistic stream we are able to see that yes this is quite desirable having the feeling of love with each and other you know with each and every human being then we place the meaning also love is the feeling of relationship to all which is the foundation of undivided society and then we try to relate this description of love with the wrong conditionings like infatuation or lust you know so particularly for the students this becomes quite relevant then the common human goal in the society the take away from here is that we can have some common goal living in a society it's not that societies the way they are developed through the history are born to be different people in the west cannot be similar to the people in the east people in african countries cannot be similar to the asian countries this kind of assumption is there that their whole tradition their whole uh, upbringing the way the societies came up the wars that were fought in the history they have given a different mindset and these people can never be at par with us this kind of mindset is there when we say that no we can have a common goal living the society and that gets somewhat evaluated and then we mention about the various dimensions of society then four orders of nature here the critical point is that we are able to see that plants and animals are different animal has self plant doesn't have self if you look at the harmony among the four orders of nature this is something which people are acquainted with in courses of environmental science or other such courses also this courses also they have come across this but the core issue here is that in animal order there is self in bio order there is no self about human order they are clear that the self is less physical order they are clear that the self is not there but the confusion arises when it comes to bio order and animal order so this part has to be focused upon while presenting this content then innateness natural characteristics inheritance of the four orders this comes up for the first time in which workshop it was not discussed in which one workshop so you cannot expect much from here so maybe people are not able to take away much from here so you do not expect also but at least we are able to show to them that these four orders can be clearly understood it is not confusing it is not something abstract it is very much to be studied and this can become a part of our academics also now when it comes to submergence of nature in space it may not be the case that people are able to relate to this and we also do not try to harp upon their wrong conditionings uh, regarding space maybe 
this also takes them to the concept of god or something so we do not exactly bring those words into our discussion but this is very important because there there could there are many assumptions and suppositions here which needs to be addressed so we talk about her summarization of nature and space but we cannot elaborate upon it that much because people are not able to grasp it much now with that we get a vision for universal human order this is more important you know that with this understanding when you place in one slide the whole existence as it is right the four orders and the development taking place in the human order and rest just being you know in harmony so this gives us a better vision for universal human order and we can see that if this is clear generation by generation we are having a human tradition in place and then we also talk about ethics in one uh, session so they may not be able to get the meaning of value policy character in our course also whenever i ask a question in which we do there is almost no one who is able to respond to this question when one is able to uh, distinguish between value policy and character and mention the three kinds of policies or the three parts of character generally students are not able to grasp but this is something but ethics is something which is very important and people are aware or people do question about or people are concerned about ethics you know even people in sitting the system that yes yes our students must have ethical conduct but how this how this understanding of value leads to ethical conduct has to be established in the workshop so these are the 20 key takeaways in fact it came out naturally while we were discussing the content uh, in the part in the volunteer meet at kusat coaching university of science and technology swil bhaiya is here so when you were sharing this content then these 20 points came up uh, if anyone would like to add something or comment on this then please come up you can mention the chat box whether these 20 key takeaways are okay or uh, are you able to relate to this or you would like to comment upon this you can raise your hand and speak yeah in the uh, professional ethics part we have six lectures over there there is one module so uh, now in the uh, schedule we have given just one session one and a half hour session there is one session for this is that enough yeah, it is not enough, but what we have found that it is towards the fag end of the workshop and people are not that much enthused to listen to the whole thing in detail. That's why we have not kept much time here. During the semester also, we find that we are able to cover up only in the last two or three lectures in the classes. If time permits, we can elaborate, but that becomes too much of a content here. That's why we have kept it only one session. If you feel that people can grasp it well, then we can keep some more sessions for that. But as per the schedule also, I think we have only one session for ethics. In the online workshops, we have two sessions, three lectures each. Mm -hmm. And what I feel is if we can add some case studies into this, we can make it more uh, live and interactive. That's my Certainly. opinion. Yeah, that's just a comment only. That's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah very good. good. I remember all these takeaways. I have we have uh, taken photographs of, of that also while you have written on the board. That is there with me still now. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice, nice yeah. Yeah. It was a gift from Kusat to me also. That you have written all those things as a gift to us. <laughs> Not the other way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Gee. So having said this, there are only 20 minutes remaining. So I'll mention a few more points and then we can discuss further. So points to take care of while presenting. So certain things came earlier also, but we'll reiterate upon that. So as Rajul Bhaiya was mentioning, this is of utmost importance that I'm able to connect with the participants. And there's a few assurance in relationship before placing deeper content. So these people sitting in front of me are my relative and I'm here to be a part of their happy life. Now, they are not a challenge for me. And so I need not feel afraid of them. I need not feel challenged by them, but I'm there to help them. And if I feel that, I'm getting some apprehension or fear, then I need to prepare myself better for conducting the workshop. So I need not start taking the workshop before this kind of assurance is there in me. At the same time, uh, it's not that I'm there to win a game and I'm going to you know, defeat all these people sitting in front of me. 
I am going to counter their arguments. No, that is not the case. They are my relatives and I am there to help them lead a happy life. This feeling has to be looked into. Ji, Lalita Didi. Bhaiya, Namaste. Uh, task, uh, this uh, whatever you are explaining, you know, Universal Human Values. Uh, he asked me like that. Uh, for such kind of question, what to give the answer, sir? Answer, Baya. Not clear, Didi. What do you want to say? That that means uh, one of the student asked. Is this universal human value is a monopoly? Monopoly is like that. Uh, is it is explaining like that? He asked. Uh, I didn't answer anything. I'll, I'll answer later like that. I told one of my student asked. So such kind of question if comes, what we need to say, Baya? Monopoly, monopoly. Yeah, so like that, yeah. If something is placed as a proposal, you know, how can it be monopoly? And we are not saying that this is the proposal. This is our proposal. So you can mention this to a student that this is our proposal. You can take proposals from various corners also. Mm. Yeah. But just mm. try to ensure self-exploration. Do not assume it to be true or false without exploring. That is all that I have to say to you. This is something that you can mention to the student. Okay, bhai. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So this connecting part is very important. Then placing the content with the feeling of relationship with real life examples. This comes naturally if I have this feeling of relationship in me. And then initiating dialogue and avoiding monologue. So we all can see in the online mode as well as in the offline mode. In fact, the approach that I generally take, I try to invite opinions, try to invite uh, comments from others regarding the content in the workshop in the very first session and try to initiate dialogue as much as possible. Once they start opening up, then conducting the rest of the workshop becomes easier. Yeah, one problem may be there that some people become quite vocal. So that has to be looked at looked at cautiously. That if somebody is becoming too much vocal, then please take care of that. But if the people are just listening to you or not asking question or not uh, giving any comment or any remark on that, so that is also not good to see, not something good. In fact, we have also found that demographically, we have different approaches. We could see that while we are conducting the session in Kerala or in Cochin, people were not coming up. They were not sharing. And when we were conducting the workshop in Chennai, people were so much vocal. In Chhattisgarh, people do not speak up. They will just listen and agree to whatever you say. In Kanpur or in UP, people are so much vocal. So <laughs> this is also something that varies from place to place. In some places, people are too much vocal. In some places, people are not vocal at all. So am I saying this rightly? And Supraja Didi? <laughs> yes, Bhaiya. It is true, but um, it is not. Yeah. Uh, it is not the exact reflection of what the feel, the feeling of the people. They have opposition, but they are not saying. That is also there. They have uh, a relationship part that is also not being reflected in their response. This can also be there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> then proposing yes, the yes, content. Yes, Yes. Yes. Proposing the content in place of trying to convince. So this is something that we said earlier also that I do not have to convince the participants, but there's a difference in the convincing response and convincing the participant. So if I'm clear, my response is very convincing. In a single statement of few words, I can convey the meaning. So for example, if somebody is saying that the other person has done so much of wrong to himself, you know, or wrong to uh, this person, this participant, and elaborating upon it, and with a single question that was it his intention or desire, your response becomes very convincing that yes, now he's able to see. So by giving this kind of response, very crisp and one-liner response, I'm able to convey the elemental part to the other person that this is not the intention, this is only a desire. Okay, I need not speak a lot about this. But if I try to convince, no, 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 this is what the desire, not the intention, this becomes a different thing. So our approach could be such that my response is convincing in place of myself trying to convince the participant by saying the same thing and again and again in so many ways. That is not required. 
but if i am clear within and i am able to see from where this doubt is coming up i can harp on the doubt or i can address that doubt you know i can address the doubt and then try to get it dismissed then focusing more on the content that is a solution than today's problems so we do cite examples of today and that help the participant to relate to one's living but it not be too critical or demoralizing or depressing so somewhat it is going to be critical because we are trying to make an analysis of the current day situation for example when we say that there are four human goals and this is the current situation so we are of course being critical of the current situation but it's not that there is no solution that's why we are placing the solution on the top and then placing the current situation similarly we give examples of preconditionings you know or say that see our imagination is so much misguided by the preconditioning so it may appear to be critical but i am not saying or we are not saying that this is what actually you are going to be you know this is your current state and you have to come out and the solution is very much there then placing the content sequentially step by step so that the participant is able to grasp the meaning clearly and not discussing beyond what has been covered or beyond the syllabus so we are not going to place anything which is not there as a <clears throat> part of hv2 content isn't it and we have to move step by step so maybe uh, when a new person starts placing the content no this is something that we have found with the uh, faculty who attend the workshop and then go to teach the course to the students this is something that i found with some of my colleagues also in the previous university at golgotia university they attended the workshop they went to the class and the very first class they would explain everything intention and competence and prosperity and position of wealth everything and a similar mistake may also take place while conducting a workshop you know so we have to move step by step we have to see how much this person is able to absorb now and what he or she can absorb next and if you look at the whole content it has been built up like that only first we place the need basic guide and container process you know and then you talk about the basic aspiration because now the person is able to reflect upon the basic aspiration though he or she may not be able to reflect upon intention or a uh, feeling of prosperity or something but he is able to reflect upon the basic aspiration and from there we build up it goes in a very rational manner and you know, the definitions are never circular we are not saying respect is feeling of relationship and what relationship is feeling of respect this kind of circular definition is not at all there in the whole content it is it has been placed so rationally so our uh, expression also has to be rational in that manner that the circular uh, definition or circular explanation does not have to be there it has to move in a step by step manner and gradually build up the content if some question comes in the very beginning we can say that is it a feeling of relationship or opposition only this much now when he is asking the same question on fourth day we can say that it is intention or desire if i start saying this on the very first day then the two words are new to the person but one is able to relate to feeling of relationship or feeling of opposition so this way we have to gradually build up the content now also we have to be aware of issues that are very sensitive uh, while presenting topics like animal consciousness so we are not denigrating or we are not uh, demeaning animals when you are saying animal consciousness we are only saying that if you are living just like uh, accumulating physical facility we are living like an animal you know because the animal is largely fulfilled by physical facility If somebody says that no, you are demeaning animals, then you can say that if you feel, then you know keep it open. And if physical facility is not enough for animal, it is certainly not enough for human being. This is one statement that can be given. You know, we are not saying that animal do not does not have feeling. People start citing examples when they are able to see the feeling in the animal, and we can also see, you know, the feeling in the cow, the feeling in the uh, calf, the feeling in the puppy of the you know a dog so we are not demeaning them rather we are just trying to uh, focus on the human consciousness then gender bias is like in uh, sometimes you no know, people enjoy examples of husband and wife and in some workshop we'll find that people start saying that why are you only harping upon the wife you know are you trying to place women you know uh, below men or something like that so you have to be little cautious about that also while giving examples that we are not trying to demean you know men or women we are only giving examples that you can relate and if some people are too much sensitive about it then we can also avoid giving examples like that then need not bring the issue of non veg food at all 
it either becomes a debatable topic or a kind of prescription. Okay. What is natural acceptability? Veg food or non-veg food? If you ask in the very first session, the whole workshop is going to turn into a turmoil. Okay. So when you're asking also what is naturally acceptable, you have to be very aware, kind of keenly aware of what I have to ask and what I have to avoid. Because this may ensure some kind of controversy. Then while responding to the questions and questions and giving answers, so you can respond to the questions from where the participant is rather than beyond their current grasp. So as I mentioned earlier, when you are moving step by step, in a similar way, we have to respond to the questions in the way the other can understand. This empathy part is very much important. Maybe we can lift this also sometime next. So I am able to be in the shoes of the other and see from where he's coming from, why he's getting this kind of question within. Isn't it? A student of science will be asking one kind of question. A student of arts will be asking some other kind of question. A person who is in a corporate sector will have one kind of mindset. A person who is uh, working in a rural area will have another kind of mindset. So this is something that we have to see. Then allowing the participant to open up at the same time avoiding session to be carried away by a few, by a few participants. So we have to allow them to open up, but there would be some people. And they start carrying away the whole workshop. So we have to be cautious about that. So allowing them to open up, allowing them to share question at the same time, not try to take your seat so that they start conducting the workshop, isn't it? Or they start giving some parallel propositions. This is also a common, uh, one kind of problem that is observed. Many times people will say that what you're saying is very much written in some textbook, maybe Gita, and, uh, and you're not saying it rightly. See, Gita says this, not this. It is this way, not that way. They will be giving some parallel propositions. Okay. And then it becomes a little challenging you know, sometimes. Uh, how to help them explore, isn't it? So we have to somehow also let them see that this is only a proposal and take what is written in the textbook also as a proposal. Take it as a proposal and verify in place of assuming that this is what it is. Maybe it is true, but you are not able to see this. You are only assuming this. Now, when somebody is carrying away the session, then you can interrupt. Otherwise, you can allow the person to question at length. And when the question is complete, then you can respond. There also, while responding to the question, you have to play the question rightly. What the other person is trying to ask. Maybe we can also say that, okay, you want to say this or you want to ask this then the question becomes more clear to the participant. Since we are able to analyze the whole thing, we are clear in our mind that this is the question, but the other person may not be able to see. So we have to clarify the question also to the participant many times. Then understanding the core question, rephrasing it and responding to the core question, which I mentioned now. Connecting with potential preconditioning, connect to the related basic reality and help them explore the next step. So maybe assuming the self to be the body, there could be so many conditionings, but the potential preconditioning that I'm assuming self to the body. This is something that we have to try. We have tried to address in the slides also. We have made some slides also where the potential preconditioning has been highlighted. Now there's only limited time. So I'll, uh, this is the last slide. Now the clarity of content. So at a personal level, this has to be clear to us. I have to be clear about the difference between value and skill. Yes, so we are saying mother-in-law and daughter-in-law examples are also objected to by the participants. Yes. Um, Kumar. Ji, yeah. <coughs> next Sunday we will have the next session, so we can cover this in detail. But this is very important things also. Okay, Bia. Yeah. So it might be okay. So if you come to a stopping point, then we can. Uh, uh, close. We'll take Ganesh's comments and then. Yeah, so I'll keep up to here, Bhaiya, and then we can take Sir's comments. There are some questions placed by Nirupam Ji. So maybe either we can address now or we can take up later. This time. also we can take up later. What is the time? It's, uh, it is 11.55. Almost 12 o'clock, isn't it? Ji, Bhaiya. Yes. Yeah. I... yeah, so I would think that it might be better if we request Ganeshi for his observations 
and then we can close the session. Yeah. And one thing I want to point out is that the initial course is introductory UHV FDP and not UHV 1. So we have to uh, place it as introductory UHV FDP. And this one that we are preparing for is UHV 2 FDP. Indeed. Yeah. But I because think lately we have, we have made introductory UHV at UHV 1, no? Or it is still introductory UHV, Bhaiya? It has always been UHV, introductory UHV. It is our, uh, uh, you know, assumption that it is UHV-1. <laughs> okay. yeah. Because earlier it was that PSL and all that. So that might yes, be something. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, request Ganesh ji for his observations. And then we yes. will... Uh, yeah. Yes, but yeah, so I am done. Thank you all. Yeah. If, if we want to give some homework, Kumar, we can do that. Um, I am so not that, prepared right now, Bhaiya. Uh, so we can share the homework. I mean, I would suggest that we uh, go over the recording one more time, take our notes, prepare our what we have understood and what still needs to be clarified so that... Uh, um, that uh, QA can take place in the next round, and then some of the remaining content that can be covered in the next round. And in the next round, if there is time, then we will also talk about the role of the other members of the resource team. Because this one is mostly for the preparing the resource persons and the co facilitator, and like that, you know, observer. Observer role we have not covered here, but the observer is also there, uh, uh, LPC is also there. So they're uh, observing this session and they're, you know, taking away something. So it is good for them also. But they have specific role also. So that role we will discuss uh, next time, time permitting. Okay. So we'll share the homework, Kumar. We can share the homework. Um, uh, online uh, in, in an email you can prepare it and share it we'll put the recording on uh, YouTube and share the link also along with the home so if Ganesh is there then we will like to take his observations yeah it looks like his. Uh, yes, but I cannot see his first name here. Yeah, it's all right. I, I, it's okay. So we will uh, stop here then and we will see you next time. We will announce the date and time uh, after discussing with the team here. But it will be next Sunday, most probably around the same time. Um, so we will. Uh, share the timing and the date. Yeah, next Sunday would be the first Sunday of the month, so we'll have our keynote lecture. Uh, that will also be there, so we have to see when we can do it. Maybe we can do it. That's why we'll announce the date and time. Maybe it can be on Saturday. Yes. Saturday, there is no... Uh, I mean, the usual weekly meetings are not there, so it might be an appropriate day. So we can discuss it and share it. There are 54 people now. Last time there were 90, almost 97, I think there were. So some people who have not been able to come today will share the recording, of course, with everyone. So they can uh, go through it, do some of the homework, additional homework and the previous homework, and then be prepared for the next uh, Next one, that will be the last one for this round of FDPs. Um, so we can close with that. Thank you all for participating. Namaste to all. Thank you all. Namaste. Namaste, Bhaiya.
नमस्ते 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 सभी को